Hello, 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 and welcome to another edition of the Kings of Anglia Fan Social. I am Ross, as ever, and I'm joined by Brad, Francine and Alex as we talk about the tale of two cup draws for town. James Nord being transfer listed and the fans forum. Our takeaways from that and we'll talk about, of course, looking ahead to Oxford United and some big games in November. Um, I want to go over to Brad first to introduce him. Welcome back to the show. Good week. Brad, you had a good week? Yes. Hello, Ross. Great to be back on. Um, yeah, been a busy week, busy working, but looking forward to the weekend. Looking forward to getting back to some league fixtures. But yeah, all good, mate. Good to hear as ever. And um, Francine, you're back. You're making your second appearance on the pod. You made a great debut a few weeks ago. Um, had a good week. And I've heard you're pretty much trying to take my job. You're a new photographer on the game. I'll see you've got your camera behind you just to rub it in my face. But how are you? Uh, yeah, I'm all good, thank you. Same as Brad, been really busy and looking forward to weekend and having football back, league back, fixtures back. So all stands open again so we can have that atmosphere building. Um, and yeah, fingers crossed my photography can actually go somewhere in the next couple of months. So, yeah. Good to hear. Good to hear. And that's a big, big statement that was as well uh, about the stands, the atmosphere. I think there's 20 odd thousand that have been sold. So it's going to be fantastic. It's going to be rocking at Portman Road. Um, and the final man that is joining us this week, and it is good old Alex. Alex, welcome back to the show. It was great to, to speak to you after the Portsmouth game, the Cambridge game. And I've missed you up the last few weeks. But how are you? And uh, good week? Yeah, I'm very well. Thank you very much for having me back, Ross. Um I'm going to get to more games as much as I can. I'm trying to fit it in around around everything that's going on in my world. But um, yeah, another another interesting week in the world of Ipswich Town Football Club. I mean, when is it ever dull? There is always something every week. It's incredible what's um, happened to this club, the transformation. And uh, yeah, lots to get stuck into tonight. I am ready. Well, and well, let's not muck about. Let's get stuck into the tale of two cup draws then, Brad. And um, one included a penalty shootout win. So that's a nice little bonus. Um, Oldham 1-1 one, one draw. A nice little replay at Boundary Park. But then we beat Colchester, a.k.a. Luke Chambers, Freddie Sears and co. Uh, no Cole Scoose, sadly, for Cole Scoose fans out there. Um, but what's your main takeaways from those two draws? A replay that pretty much we didn't want, but we got. We're still in the FA Cup. We're still in the hat. We've got Barrow at home. That is our prize if we beat Oldham in a replay. But um, your takeaways from both those games? Yeah, my takeaway from both games is that there's two strong sides in both of them. I mean, you can look at the Colchester game and that's a really strong side. And you think Colchester have made, what, five changes? And yet ours, our team, I mean, we we should have won that game. We, have, we had lots of chances in the 90 minutes. Um, should have quite easily won it. But, but yeah, I, I, I think the case of Saturday was the fact that we got 1-0 up and then we thought, oh, this is a bit easy. And then took our foot off the gas. Then they got, then they went 1-1. And I, th- I think it was a bit of a case of, God, actually, we would look really stupid if we lose if we lose this. And I think it was just a case of where they were taking short corners. They weren't uh, pulling the ball back from a byline. They were just going backwards. And there wasn't the fight and the endeavour to go and win the game is what you'd have in the in a league game, it's exactly what Paul Cook said, didn't he? Um, credit Oldham, they, pr- they probably had nothing to lose, especially with their situations going on at the moment. So, then players just left it all out there. And that's the magic of the cup at the end of the day. Yes, we fielded a strong team. Yes, we should be beaten and we should be sweeping them aside. Um, but I'm not, not too overly bothered because but the FA Cup throws up funny results. There was, there was plenty of other teams in League One who lost the lower league position, Sunderland being one. Um, so I'm hoping that we're going to correct what we did Saturday. We're going to correct that next week in our white kit on a Tuesday night. And um, yeah, poor old, poor old Oldham. They don't know about that, do they? <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I'm not too, I'm not too bothered. Of course, I'd like to have won both games. Of course, I'd like to have really got some momentum going but I don't think it's going to upset the momentum too much because we smashed Wickham 4-1 and that, that is still firmly in my mind um, like firmly at the forefront so yes looking forward to the weekend yes indeed um, it has been a nice little break though hasn't it Francine have a little bit of the cups you know after a long league one campaign we've got ahead of us um, it's nice to have a little break um, both of them were draws both strong lineups that was my surprise on Saturday afternoon seeing that lineup. I thought surely not 
Paul Cook has not got the memo. He's not been told. You, you changed your whole team for the Cups. Of course, he did that in the Newport County game and he did that in the early stages of the Pat John's Trophy games. But was that a nice feeling when you saw that team when he's actually going for it now? Yes, yeah, so I was very surprised. Um, don't think you ever expect a, pretty much the strongest lineup in the FA Cup. Um, so it was really good to see. Um, so I can't argue with anything Brad said about the game. We did go one and up and we just we got arrogant. We did just think, oh, this is going to be easy. They're going to roll over now. Um, but we and we did create so many chances. They just weren't quite falling for anybody, whether it be rebounds or just the way the cross went in. Um, and Cold and Oldham did defend really, really well. They just blocked everything. Um, as Brad said, they've got nothing to lose. If they won, then it's great. If they lose, then you know that's what everyone expected of them. Um, and Colchester, the Colchester game. Um, yeah, it was all right. Again, we created chances, but we found it really hard to make a proper way through their defence. They really, you know, they set up to park the bus um, and they did it. Um, I was really concerned. I turned around to Thomas and said, Chambers is going to score the winning penalty if this goes to penalties. I, I could just see it. So I was very, very glad when um, we did win. Um, and I feel for Pickett because he was trying and I think he was trying almost too hard. I think first game back since after his dad died and he wants that first goal. But I think he was trying too hard for it, which is why he was offside all the time and things weren't quite falling for him. Um, I think once it comes for him, naturally, he'll be all right. But I think, yeah, that was his issue. That's, from my opinion, what I saw was his just tried a little bit too hard on that first game back. OK, then. Um, Alex, over to you to wrap up the tale of two cut draws. Um what stood out from you and what else, how how should we look back at these games? And, you know, we're still in the Pat Jones Trophy. We're still in the FA Cup until we have to play Oldham in the replay. But, um, yeah, what's your takeaways from those two games? Well, you probably don't remember this. I think it was 84, 85. We made the Cup quarterfinals. We lost to Everton, uh, Goodison. Um, Kevin Sheedy scored, I think, two free kicks. One that was disallowed and he scored the other one. Derek Mountfield got a late, late equaliser. We did have a, we used to have a really good history in the Cups and obviously Thomas Priskin against Arsenal. But we are now cursed. I, I can't see that any other team in the top three leagues has a worse record than us in Cup competitions. I can't imagine any of them having a worse record in Cup competitions. We are effing awful at Cups. <laughs> and I don't know what it is. I think it's it's been a bit of a curse for 15, 20 years. We're, we're nowhere. We can't even get to the FA Cup third round. It's interesting, you know, everything is falling our way with these cup draws. The draw, Oldham, wheelbarrow if we win. The penalty <laughs> save. Yeah, the penalty save. West Ham getting relegated and dropped off the old ham and pineapple. So that means that we get a home draw in the next round of that. It's, it's, it's all, we, things are falling for us in these cup draws. And we're, and we're not taking advantage of them. We're, we're, it's, I know what you're both saying about you're not that bothered. I think what these cup draws show, you know, we couldn't beat Colchester and Oldham at home. That's that's uh, he's a worry. Yeah, he's a worry. That's about intensity, and that's about getting seven out of ten, eight out of ten out of your players every week. That's what good teams do, pretty much. Cook knows there's a long way to go. That's what I think these cup draws show. There is still a really, really long way to go for Cookie. Um, I wish he had an assistant coach. We're going to talk about that later, I hope. I wish he had a number two that was there to maybe oversee it, take a bit of the heat off Cookie so he's not at everything, all over everything, all the time, because he's going to burn himself out, I'm sure. Um, I was gutted that we couldn't go on from that 1-0 up against Oldham. And the Colchester, we had created a lot of chances, but we also, Colchester missed a couple of gilt edge chances as well. And Hadkey gave the ball away in the last minute. That could have been us out, Colchester. What would we have been saying then? It doesn't really matter. We were that close. So I'm really gutted. I really want us to get a result against Oldham because I want to see us in the FA Cup third round. I want to see us there. I want to get the budgies. I want, a bit, I want that buzz. The Cups are nothing. Well, I, I still have a real affection for the Cups. I'm sure Cook is really frustrated about that 
Oldham game. When we were 1-0 up after seven minutes, cruising into the second round, supposedly. And then Christian Walter has to save a penalty just to keep us in it. I think basically that I'm really gutted about those results. We've got another chance. Um, I hope we can do it. But there is a, what it shows to me is that there's a, there's a long, long way to go for us, definitely. Well, well said as ever, my friend. I think that's a perfect way to move on from those two cup draws and talk about a man that is going to be a big talking point for the next few weeks, a man who's been absent from those cup games, and that is James Norwood, our number 10. Um, the news broke today, of course, from Andy and Stu that he has been transfer listed and he's been training with the under-23s. Uh, Brad, probably not a surprise for many of us. We we haven't seen him for a while, so you think, is he injured or has he been put out in the cold and in, in the bomb squad? Um, of course, that was a famous Bond squad in the summer. Um, but what's your reaction on that? And uh, are you disappointed to, to see that? And well, are you surprised? Yeah, I, I am disappointed, but I'm not surprised in the slightest. Um, I think since this, well, since the start of the season, I know he came on the first game, flipped the ball on for Bond to score, but he hasn't really featured at all since then, has he? And, um Really disappointed because he, he came with so much promise, didn't he? 30 goals from League 2 uh, was the big name sign in that summer. But it just hasn't hasn't worked out for him. And just Ipswich as a whole, the whole living here and that, I don't think... I think he just needs to go somewhere where he's loved, really, doesn't he? It doesn't doesn't feel like to me that he, he likes... He likes it here anyway. Even though I've heard from Stuart Annie today that he does. But... I feel like when he gets criticism, he he bites back and he doesn't take it on the chin and fuel his fire. He like he 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 argues with fans on Twitter and stuff like that. Whereas at a club where which absolutely love him, adore him, he's going to get more adulation than he will criticism. Than he will criticism. So I just, I, th- I think he's struggled with moving a level up, to be honest. Because at a big club, the biggest club that he's played played for, we weren't all just going to just going to jump on the James Norwood um, charisma sort of band, bandwagon that he had to train there. So, but um, for me, he's still probably my two strike club. Striker role. Um, I like I like Joe Piggott, I really do. But he came from playing the two up front at Wimbledon. Um, he's always played in a two. And I think Norwood is just a better option than Piggott is up front. I think Piggott's a really good player. I really like Piggott. But Norwood is a proper threat. And he is a, he's a, he's a good number nine, but he's not as good as McCauley Bond. So I'd be very disappointed if we weren't, if we didn't have a second coming in McCauley Bond. The fact that he's a massive town fan, a brilliant, brilliant striker, all around striker, can do everything, can do everything that James Norman can. A bit. So in, in an attempt to sort of reshuffle in January, which Cook was saying in the in the fans forum, then I think that's probably what's going to happen, isn't it? I think Norwood's going to go and we're going to get somebody, probably replace him like for like in a way, get, get another num- number nine in then, and then um, to compete with Bond and Piggott. But yeah, of course, of course I'm disappointed because when he, when he first came to the club and he had his first goal scorer in season of 11, he, he can score goals at this level. He can, but his injuries, man, I mean, the amount of times last season where he'd he'd play one game and it was getting to a point where I was going to be surprised if I saw him in a start and left like, oh God, two games in a row for Norwood. I almost couldn't believe it. So you can't you can't pay that amount of money for a striker who is injured that much um, and doesn't clearly doesn't get on with Cook because he's been transfer listed in November so and his training will be on the 23. So... I hope he I hope he goes on and does well at 31. Um, and at the end at the end of the season, his contract was going to run out, so he's, he's never going to get a new deal, was he? But yeah, I, w- I wish him all the best. I mean, I, I we can talk all day long about his off-field antics, but I'll just talk about things on the pitch because everyone's got their opinion on that, haven't they? But but yeah, I hope he I hope he goes on and has a good finish to his career. Well said. And um, Francine, were you were you surprised? What was your first reaction when you saw that new story? And yeah, he's uh, it was a massive cue when we signed him. You know, back in the first league one season, we thought here we go, and he, he did prove that he can score at this level. And he he was that star striker up front for us. But those injuries, as Brad said, has been a massive issue for him. But yeah, what was your reaction? 
Yeah, again, I can't argue anything Brad has said there because he's it's disappointing because say his goal record for the games he has played is actually really good. Um, I think when I read the article from Sure and Andy, it was um, is it two, one every two games on average. You know, that's what you want from a striker, isn't it? If you know that's something you look for, and you look for goal scoring records, that kind of record. Um, and you add in his injury records into that as well. That makes it even better, arguably. But, yes, it is really disappointing that he's not been able to really kick on and, you know, secure, you know be fighting alongside Bond for that starting position and helping us get back to the championship, particularly given, I say, the excitement we all had when he signed. Um, and I really hope he, wherever he goes, whether it's back down, you know, the South Coast, where his family, where his family are from, and stuff, or where he goes back up to Tranmere Way, then I do wish him the best and hope he, and I hope he's all right and has a nice career as long as he doesn't score against us. <laughs> Definitely, because that is the one worry. You know, we could sell him to a rival like a Portsmouth or Plymouth. I know there's those different clubs been named. If he goes there and he scores against us, like a a massive game that needs to get us in the playoffs and it happens it's sort of like oh got egg on our face pretty much um but Alex over to you to sort of end this chat on Norwoods um of course as Brad said the off field antics is probably not what the club want to have at their football club having a player like that with all the problems that he's gone through we won't go too much in depth about that but I'm sure Mark Ashton and co probably saw that and went mm, I don't really want that sort of player at our club now we're coming more of a fact, fact luckily now we're coming a more um community club again which is great but um what, what's your feelings on this? Well, Stu and Andy did a really good piece on it um, tonight, actually. They, they, saw, they touched on a few things that, that I felt about it all. The first thing is the human element. It's really sad. Mm-hmm. It's really sad for me. Norwood is the most high-profile town player that we have in terms of giving us access to his life. Caden Jackson puts kid, pics of his kids up, his, his little boy all the time. Norwood, we, we saw everything about him. We saw everything about Norwood's life in the past two and a half years. It, where he lived with Paul Mullin, the Wrexham boy. How much he loves his dogs. He put his dog's pictures up every day. He's walking his dogs alone. There was the, tw- the Twitter spats that he was having, which he didn't need to be doing. It shows that he's not the smartest, you know, not the sharpest tool in the shed. The drink driving, the, which is pending again. All these, in- the wrestling, the wrestling stuff, the, the, the humour. <sighs> you see, it's, it's a fine line. We don't want our players to be robots. We want them to have a personality. We want them to express themselves. But as the injuries started to kick, Norwood would come on as a sub and get booked. And I know that he would try and give a bit of edge to something, but he was getting booked nearly every game that he did play. And then the injuries came on. Then Mullen buggered off to Wrexham, didn't he? His mate left him. So he's there alone with his dogs on his phone, not allowed to tweet on a drink driving charge. Now, I think all of that is a really sad picture for a guy that started so well for us. Brad was saying that he wasn't loved. Do you know what, Brad? I actually disagree. I think we really showed him a lot of love in those first two years. I was singing his name from the top of my, you know, if we'd have been there. Um, <laughs> it, it was a pandemic, wasn't it? But we, we, I loved the guy, and I think we all did. And we loved his energy and his wrestling, you know, doing a wrestling jump when he had an injury. Didn't he have an, an injury and he was doing a wrestling gig? Yeah. Um, and I kind of loved all that, but... It's the injuries that have caned him. Never mind the Twitter stuff. It's the injuries. And um, if he's... And in conclusion, Paul... Uh, sorry, um, Stu and Andy were talking about, oh, we don't want to sell him to a rival club. That might buy us. And you could think of Marcus Stewart of an example of Huddersfield to Ipswich is the ultimate example of biting you on the backside. You know what? This is an injury-prone 31-year-old booking regular with dodgy hamstrings. Let him go. Let him go to Pompey. Let him go to Plymouth. They're all doing, you know, Plymouth, Portsmouth, we ain't got to worry about them. If he wants to go to Plymouth, let him go with our good wishes. Oh, well, if he goes on and scores 15 goals, so what? That's our, that's our bad, isn't it? The key is to get him off the wage bill in January. So if you want to bring someone else in, get rid of him now and sell him. He wants to play for us. He wants to stay. So like Andy and um, the guys were saying, it's going to be a tricky sale to get everything in all our ducks in a row because he wants to stay. Who's going to come in for a crotch guy on a drink driving charge with a, with a Twitter problem? What, who's going to take him? If someone comes in, makes a good offer, gets him off the wages, whatever he's on, five to 10K a week, I'd say get rid. 
but it's a sad story. He was very, he's very open. We see him all the time. He's on Twitter with his dogs. I feel for the guy. I really wish it had worked out. I don't think he's the sharpest. I think he's made some mistakes and it's, it's caught up with him now. He's in a tricky spot. If he gets a good offer, let him go. There we go. Well said. I think that is all we need to say on that um, situation. We'll wait and see what happens with James Norwood. Will he leave in January or will he be there? And will he just be there until the end of the season when his contract will run out? Um, but um, let's move on to the fans forum, uh, which was, of course, Monday evening. Ed Schwartz, um, one of the game changers guys, uh, one of the guys that does in, who's charged of the pension fund and all that. Um, first time for him to chat and speak and be at a game, of course, he was there too tonight. So a penalty shootout. Way. <laughs> Brett Johnson had the late winner, but um, Ed Schwartz got a penalty shootout win, which is pretty good. Um, but let's talk about the main takeaways. It's great to see, of course, Mark Ashton was there. Paul Cook was there. Mike O'Leary was there. Michael O'Leary, what a what a man! Just what a man! I could listen to him all all day. He's just how he just answers all of these questions are just fantastic. But Brad, um, what's your main takeaways and what what sort of stood out for you? And it's just great once again we've got that engagement again from the the people in charge of our, of our football club. Yeah, just four great guys for me, um, all different in their own way. It was great seeing Ed Schwartz, of course, and um, the thing that was great from him was the fact that how they were, I know they're not going to say anything different, but just how much he was ramming home that they're here for a long time, that they're here for to, to see success at this football club. And if, if it doesn't go as we all want it, they're not going to jump ship. So I think that that definitely um, made me feel a bit better, just how, how frank he was about that. Um, like I say, he wouldn't say different, would he? But... But yeah, just I, I love hearing from Mark Ashton uh, every chance we get to because the man's just an, an amazing public speaker. He, if he wasn't a CEO, I'm sure he could find a job doing that because it's insane how how well he addresses. All, he gives respect to every single person in that crowd who asks the questions, um, answers them with answers them the best that he can. He doesn't no politician answers with him at all. Is there? So he's he's just brilliant to listen to. Michael O'Leary, like you say, great as well. Um, and Paul Cook, I, I love Cookie. I just absolutely love Cookie. And just, just that was a real, real enjoyable evening at home for me. I went there uh, watching it and um, just, just enjoying some of the questions, uh, funny old questions that came out. But uh, you're going to get that, like we were saying uh, before we came on, you said about how you're going to get there in an hour and a half, aren't you? Like by, by the end, it's just people are going to start thinking of any old stuff. But but it's a great chance to ask them guys the questions you want to ask, and um, it's we're we're, we're we're really going somewhere. I don't think you can really take away anything else other than that. But the, the, the main thing being is the fact that we're onto such a good thing here, and um, it's just absolute worlds apart from what we've been used to. Uh, the number one fan that he was, Michael Sevens, which I alluded to. But but yeah. Um, it was, great. it was great to hear from them all. And uh, I definitely do want to get along to one of them. I'd love to ask one of my questions. So, so yeah, brilliant. Well, that is going to be um, one of the questions I'm going to ask you after we do the takeaways from the fans forum. I'm actually going to let Brad and Francie and Alex have their own question to ask um, to the floor. And, or maybe I can answer it, maybe, just in a very simple one-worded one answer. Uh, but Francine, what's your takeaways? And I'm sure, like all of us here as fans, we, we just enjoyed just hearing them, you know, answering the questions that we want to just be, you know, told and asked. So what's your thoughts on it all? Yeah, I, I mean, you can't imagine even that being a possibility if Evans was still here. It would, I mean, it wouldn't be, would it? It would be silent. We wouldn't be hearing anything from him. Um, and everyone has their own thoughts on him and things. But yeah, we wouldn't have had this. And I think that's brilliant. And they are really trying to engage fans back into the club um I, I i liked the comment that about from schwartz about how it's going to be a long is, is a long-term thing and he so if we get promoted it's not going to be doing a derby and throwing tens of millions of pounds at it just to maybe get promoted it will be a steady investment sensible investment in order to get us to where we all want to be um I was interested about the fact we're going to be in the transfer market in January because we had, was at the end of the transfer window, Ashton was very dismissive of the January transfer window, saying that 
that's when you get stupid money being spent um, and he doesn't really like doing deals then. So I found that very interesting. Um, see, we do need it. We do need reinforcements. There are areas for weakness weakness where we need improvement but that was an interest in that already that they, they've that change of mind of oh we will be doing deals in january it won't be quiet um so yeah that that was all really interesting for me sorry i was um my mic was moving and I, couldn't find, <laughs> I couldn't find the button i couldn't find the button to <laughs> to um unmute myself so amateur hour from me um but um alex over to you um what was your takeaways from the fans forum? It's just a, it's just a good little watching it. Of course, you've got questions about pies and fines and <laughs> buses, bus flowers and all that. Um, I yeah, you know, yeah. It's just it's remarkable, isn't it? I would say we were talking before about where the club is now to where we were six months ago. Well, I mean, it's absolutely incredible. Brad's spot on about Ashton. I mean, the way he speaks, he just he's like a politician. He, you know, he's he's like a very own Barack Obama, isn't he? He's a wonderful orator. And you can just listen to him. You just, you just, you just get, get lost in his eyes. Um, it's fantastic. You're just absolutely brilliant. That they all speak very well. It was really weird to listen to Edge Farts, okay, talking about the UK football franchise and the way that they speak about us as a business. You know, long-term sustainable success and on all these this lag with the estate that they're thinking of, the plans that they have, short term and longer term. They're doing it as a real huge business project, which is really fascinating when they talked about money and transfers ashton really had a glint in his eye and he was very bullish when he said we will be active in january we need to reshuffle and just like francine said that's fascinating for me that we're gonna we need to be active what we're gonna buy some more players we're gonna shift some out we're gonna get some more in i mean that's absolutely brilliant um very bullish about what we're doing then he talked about the ground he talked about the club he talked about the service our product isn't good enough we want to inspire people. Our facilities aren't good enough. The ground doesn't even face the city. Doesn't even face the town. Sorry, doesn't even face it. And they're talking about all these things. The Cobalt Stand has got a lifespan. They've come in and they've just lifted our club up from the very bones of its ass. And they were talking about Marcus Stewart. Sorry, Marcus Stewart. Marcus Evans. I'm obsessed with Marcus Stewart tonight. Um, <laughs> Marcus Evans. They were talking about him. He was, he was, it was terrible the way that he left the club. You just got that vibe from him. There was a complete disconnect between him and the staff. The place was falling apart. The kiosks don't work. Um, they were talking about the electricity not being right, getting a big screen in, doing all this stuff. Um, and they're also talking about how Schwartz was talking about the ego purposes of buying a football club. That's very true. Very true how many managers buy it as something to play with. I'm sure Manchester United will testify to that. They're not doing it for ego purposes. Now, they said this, whether this is true or not. They're saying all the right things. Um, an estate strategy that they talked about. Absolutely fantastic. So much came out. But, and there is a but, and we've had this before, Ross. Paul Cook, does he, he back and forth on himself. He said, it was individual mistakes that we started losing games, but it's no one's fault. Well, which is it then, Paul? It's individual mistakes, but it's no one's fault. Well, it is, isn't it? It's the individual that made the mistake. He takes responsibility, but he also doesn't take responsibility. What I got out of this is he asked about Peter Reid, and he said he's got a different view from me, and I work with him at Wigan, and he's come in, and he just comes down on half time, and he's in a consultancy thing. And I'm like, what, what does that mean? Okay. Franny Jeffers is doing the defence. And Gary Roberts is on attack. Okay, interesting. They are very much in the back room, very much in the background. A couple of things. He will not budge on one up front. We were talking about Joe Piggott earlier. Joe Piggott likes to have another person up front with him. They were talking about, why didn't you bring on an extra striker? And he was talking about, yeah, Joe Piggott should get game more game time. He didn't mean that. What he meant was, is we need to bring on a striker alongside Bond, not to take off the one man. Cook is very rigid about this 4 2 3 1. And he's, you know, but he's under so much pressure. It's such a fascinating microscope, isn't it? He's never had to deal with this before. He's got a whole world. He's got America behind him. And he needs to deliver. So, as much as they say it's long term, they'll be expecting playoffs this year. I bet that's the minimum expectation. 
But like Ashton said, when we come out of January, we want to be in good shape or in a good position after the January transfer window to men make that charge. So unlike in 2015, when we were top of the league at Christmas and we didn't get any investment and fell away, and we had the best striker in Europe in Daryl Murphy at the time and didn't invest, we're now going the other way and taking a bit more of a gamble and spending more money. Look, that forum was incredible. They, they talk so with such love about our club. If they're still here in two years, we'll be in a fantastic shape. I just hope that it is that long-term sustainability that they talk about. I'll stay with you, Alex, there. And um, if you were there, what, what sort of questions would you ask? Or what all the questions that you would have asked have been asked? Or is anything in it would, have been, it would have been about getting a bigger picture on the coaching structure. Mm -hmm. I would have asked Paul Cook, what was the name? What's the first name of the Richardson guy at Wigan? Liam. Um, Liam? I would say, who's your Liam Richardson, Peter, uh, Paul? Who is it here? And explain to me what's different from your relationship with Franny and Roberts, Gary Roberts, in terms of your relationship with Richardson. Because I still believe we are short on terms of coaching and I think he's taking too much on his back. So that's what I'd ask him. How does the coaching relationship differ from your time with Richardson and Wigan? Are Roberts and Jeffers basically taking two spots for one man? And how does that work? Mm, OK, good question. Um, Brad, over to you. What sort of questions would you ask? He's there. Is he there? Hello, Brad. Yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm there. there. But my, my connection's going a bit funny, that's all. Um, that's fine. You're back. Yeah. Alex has basically took the words out of my mouth. I'd, 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 I'd quiz him on coaching. I'd quiz him on tactics. Um, I find it fascinating when I hear managers speak about tactics. So I'd ask him I'd, I'd ask him about 4 2 three, one, little different things in that. Um, how do you see both of your sitters? I'd... I'd I just I just find it fascinating when you hear from managers about tactics. So I wouldn't really look at bigger picture stuff because for me I just always think about the Saturday. I always think about the next game and I I, I try and think oh well, who have we got in three or four games time. I know who I know who we've got, but I just always look forward to the next game. So just picking managers' games, man managers' brains on there, the games coming up, um, what you're going to do in them. I, yeah, I. I I'd, I'd love to ask those sorts of questions, but um, but yeah, another thing from it, I I was surprised at how, like like you guys have said about how active we're going to be in January because, to me, it seems like there's been a conversation somewhere now where Cook has they, they've probably had the conversation where it's not going too well, is it, Cookie? It's not didn't, not where we thought we would be, all that sort of stuff, and I reckon that Paul Cook has probably fallen back on the fact that look, there's a massive change this summer. Give me January to get these in, try and mould this squad a bit more. Yeah, I, I think that a conversation has been had somewhere where I think that he's he's facing he was facing a little bit of pressure and the fact that because um, it's the first time we've had, actually heard anything about him needing January to try and sort the squad out, um, try and have a look a little bit more because it was all about this summer, the massive summer of change. It's the first time I've heard something about that, so that's what makes me think that. Something's been had there where, look, look, Paul, this, this isn't going as well as what we thought it was. Um, and then Kurt said, yeah, I'm still not quite there yet. We still need a few more ones in that I want, a few more out. Um, and also, I, I, and, and like Alex said, he does he does kind of throw players off the bus a little bit. I know he tries not to, but when, his, when he joked about, well, we clearly haven't got a defensive coach, have we? Like, I, I feel like that's a little bit, bit far really because if I, I imagine that George Edmondson and Toto NCR are watching that or have seen snippets from it. Um and that doesn't that's probably not gonna sit too comfortably with them thinking, oh, okay. Uh I thought we were doing all right here. We just we're on a really good run of form. Yes we leap we leap the goals in, yes we do, but we're also scoring plenty. Um I think I think sometimes he doesn't realise when he's actually being harsh on his own players. <laughs> but but yeah, that, that did certainly prick my ears up when he said how active would be, and I, I think he's right too because it takes more than just one window to form a squad, doesn't it? But, but like I say, a conversation definitely been had there about the pressure that he's under, and and hopefully, it's, hope, hopefully we're sitting here in May, all things are rosy because he bought in that perfect sign and at the perfect time. But well, watch for space. Yes, watch your space indeed. And uh, over to you then, Francine. You've got one question to ask. You've got 
for people to, to, to ask it, would you would you go more about the on field stuff or off field stuff? What would you ask? Um, I'd probably do more off field stuff. There's two things potentially. One, I probably would go development of the ground because me and my dad have been speaking for years about how we need a screen. And I know not everyone feels and thinks we do need one. Oh, I think it would make an impact, a difference to the match day experience. I and mean, you could have, if you had, when you've got those guests on at half time, people would see. You could have someone filming them and people actually be able to see who it is. Um, and, I mean, the money you get from advertising as well because you'd be able to have adver adverts up there, sponsors. Um, and the other question would probably be a bit more personal on the lines of Rainbow Tractors just because, um, you know, see, I'm working very closely with Dan at the club Um who's see, really on board with everything but i think i'd probably have thought of a question regarding that to see what what the more ashton and o'leary probably would you know how they're on board with you know ideas for being inclusive towards the group once again i've completely forgot <laughs> how to use my mouse oh uh, no well said well said um and I think that's, you know, I'm sure they're going to continue doing fans forums. Um, they, won't, they won't just, as I said, they won't just do it during the honeymoon period when we're doing well. They'll they'll do it whenever they can fit it in with the schedule. Um, and I'm sure they have another guest next up because they had Ed Swartz this time. Last time they had, you know, they had Mark Ashton, Paul Cook. Who else was there? Did they have four people there? Mike O'Leary was there. And is there anybody else there? Or was it actually just those three? Maybe it's just those three for the first one. Probably. Anyway. Move on. <laughs> yeah, I think it was just those three at the first time, but I'm sure there'll be another one. Um, let's talk about then a big November ahead. Uh, we've had the nice little break of the cuts, but we have got four big league games, um, especially the next two games. Um, of course, Oxford at home this Saturday and then Sunderland away next week. And then we've also got Rotherham on a Tuesday night and then we've got Crew on the Sunday. And we found out why the game... On, is on the Sunday the crew game. It's basically the rest. But then I think now we're in the Papa John's Trophy. So I don't know if it'll get rearranged. But enough of that. Um, four games. I want to go over to you first, Brad, to get your thoughts on these. Uh, how many points is it? Three, six, nine. Twelve points up for grabs. What are you predicting? Um, of course, the next three games are big games. Massive, isn't it? Massive. Um, can't wait. And you know what? I think we're going to do really well. Because... We, t we we turn up against these bigger teams, don't we? We have done so far this season. I know we haven't played many yet, but we're, we're turning up against them because they come, at, they come at us. We've struggled against sides which sit back, sit in, want us to come onto them. But you get sides like Wickham who wanted to beat us at their place, a big crowd. You're going to get um, Sunderland, absolutely. Of course, every team wants to beat us. Of course they do, but... Um, I think that suits us so much more because we have so much pace in our side. We have Edwards, Burns, who are absolutely lightning. So if you can soak up pressure and hit them on the break, I think in those games, certainly I, I, I do not see a scenario where we don't beat someone. I'm saying that now. I'm probably going to beat myself. But, but I absolutely 100% expect us to beat someone. They're on a downturn of form. We're going up there. Um, I, we're going well, we've lost Brad there for a second, so we are going to move on to Alex, and um, hopefully Brad will join us soon. His internet is just having some issues, but we'll get back to that soon. But Alex, um, four big games, my friends. What do you reckon? Uh, what's your predictions for the next 12 points up for grabs? What are you going for? Yeah, it's absolutely huge, isn't it? This is the this is the make or break time now. We're coming to the Christmas period, which is even more hectic. So you've kind of got this time now, this, this two-month frame we said earlier, five games in 16 days. I mean, it's just crazy November. It's really busy now. There's so much talent in this squad. There's so many goals. There's been so many, there's been quite a few good, great performances now that the opposition doesn't really matter. I think it all comes down to how are we going to play? How do we play on the day? It's kind of like you're either, we're either there or we're either there, aren't we? If we can just be there, I think we'll be fine. But it's just getting down there is the problem. But if we get there, we'll batter anyone. So I don't see Sunderland as any different to Accrington Standing or Fleetwood or teams that we've struggled against previously. 
just like I didn't get over the top about oh Wickham and Portsmouth we're going to win the league. It's going to it's just get, getting that level that maintain that seven eight out of ten for each player who all know their jobs, who don't do silly things, who concentrate in the moments that Paul keeps talking about. Um, not blaming anyone, but it's individual mistakes. But not blaming anyone. It's about that team and us coming up, turning up to play. Because we look bigger, don't we? We look bigger than anybody else. We look better than anybody else. We look quicker. We look stronger. We just look like a team that shouldn't be in League One. However, doing that over 95 minutes is then a very different thing. So I'm optimistic more than I ever have ever been about if we play well, we'll get the results. What I do know is that Cook has got his nine players, hasn't he? He's got his eight or nine now of it's going to pick. Um, if you look at the Wickham, the Wickham team, you know, Walton, KVY, that's your dodgy one. Fridge, Toto, Coulson. Okay. Edwards, Burns, Morsey, Evans, Selena. Bon. That's your team, isn't it? But then that leaves out a Luco and Chaplin, who I saw at all of this season, have been brilliant. Chaplin and Luca have been outstanding. And we're not even talking about Piggott. We're not even talking about Penny. We're not even, you know, all these other players. We do have the best squad in the league. We do. So, therefore, if we play, we'll deliver. It's going to be all right. Um, I'm optimistic. I don't really care about the opposition. If we play, Ross, we'll get the results if we play. So, what are you going for then? 12 points up for grabs. What are you predicting? Absolutely. I don't think we'll lose for the rest of the season. <laughs> okay, well, I, that is. I, you know what I'm like, right? We do a prediction league, don't we, on WhatsApp? Yeah. And where am I? Fourth from bottom. I've only I've been one goal out about ten times. <laughs> I never get. It. I, I don't get it right. I don't, I'm terrible at predicting, so I'm over that. It's a good job I'm not a gambling man because I wouldn't have this stuff <laughs> to sit on if I was. <laughs> to be fair, you, you predicted the um, you didn't know we didn't do cup games, and I remember you predicting us to lose against Newport, Newport. and then you messaged me and you went, <laughs> oh, Have I got maximum points? Went, yeah, we don't do cup games, and you're like, yeah, we, oh. did. we did the FA Cup this week, we did the FA, yeah, li- no, that was just a nice little d- change. Oh. I thought FA Cup as well, no offense to yeah. the Carabao League Cup, I just yeah, no one really cares about that, but the FA Cup, the magic of the FA Cup, yeah, um, well, yeah. we have some good news, Brad is back, um. Brad, we, we continue without you, but I'm, I'm happy you're back. Uh, yeah, uh, I don't know where we left off with you, um, but Alex said we're going to win the rest of the season. We're going to win every game. What, what do you reckon? <laughs> I said, Brad, if we play to our potential because we've got the best squad in the division, we should be fine and it doesn't really matter about the opposition, is what I said, to paraphrase yeah. more yeah. realistically. I can, I can be a I, I don't see a squad... That, that worries me because we've got Sam Morsey, we've got Ollie Barnes, but they're, they're, they're just, for, for me on paper, they're better than any other team. So it's going to be known what we can do. Oh, All no. right, I'm, <laughs> yeah, see you later. I'm out of <laughs> right now. Brad, yeah, Brad don't Brad's freeze. Good. You just backed up everything I just said. Don't go anywhere. Oh. Off you can. No. Am I still here? still here? You're still you here. You're fine. You're better. You're here. It's fine. Yeah. Where Where do I go from here? Um, yeah. <laughs> two one the weekend. <laughs> He's going two one. Two one the weekend. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm, France. Yeah. No, Brad. What are you going to say? Yeah. Two one at the weekend. We'll beat Sunderland. We'll beat Rotherham. We'll beat Rotherham because Rotherham on a Tuesday night. Let's get one over Paul Warren. Yes, please. Get one over that budgie. Really want to beat Rotherham. Um, yeah, I, I, I just, we're going to we're gonna get on a roll now because we've got these big teams coming and we're going to show what we're about. Well said, well put. Um, Francine, then, what do you reckon? And are you as confident as the, the lads or are you going to go a bit Rotherham? We always lose against them. And uh, yeah, what, what do you reckon? Um. As you know, I'm quite a positive person when it comes to it, which I, in, I inherit that from my dad, I think. You know, it doesn't matter. You know, we'll win, as far as I'm concerned. However, I have concerns um, about our consistency and how we play against a side like Rotherham. Um, when a side is physical this season and has been it's more of a long ball, you know, physical side, we struggle. 
we really struggle to impose our game. And quite often, the issue we've had after we've scored, where we've conceded, has been the fact that we suddenly resort to that we lose our way. Um, as it, you know, there was times against multiple home games this season. I can't even they've all merged into one at the moment where suddenly if there's been 10 minute period where we're just kicking the ball long you know the Bolton you know awful performance where we were booting it long to Chaplin who was up against that six foot whatever defender if we do that against Rotherham we lose if that's the play, if that's the way we play against Rotherham we lose because that's their game and they will completely batter us at that if we can play to our strengths against a side like that and on the floor, no problems. Um, however, my concern is that we just panic and boot it everywhere. Um, I do think we'll win this weekend and I do think we'll beat Sunderland. It would just be so Ipswich, though, to lose against Crew. <laughs> um, you know, so say when the next three games we get, we have Crew at home. To win four in the row, uh, we, we we draw it or lose it. it. It's an Ipswich thing to do. We turn up against the big teams, mess it up against the smaller teams who we should be beating. Um, so I'm going to go 10 points the next four games because I think we'll drop points against Crew. Can I say oh, something? Dear. Else? Yeah, go ahead. I still think we're, we're missing <laughs> the <tarsary. laughs> Yeah, still, yeah. I think we're just... you know what I mean? I think... That, that isn't sound effects, by the way, ladies and gentlemen. It's actually Alex I basically punched his hand. Yeah. I think we're missing <laughs> a bit of that. I really do. I think every yeah. good team has a few of them in their team. Not just one. Not just one. I'm yeah. thinking back to Tariko. I'm thinking Magilton. I'm thinking um, all of our centre backs, whether it was McGreal, whether it was Mowbray, whether it was go through those great teams. Oh, Stuart, Stuart liked to leave his foot in. That's the eighth mention of Marcus Stewart tonight. Um, <laughs> we need. Where is that? Where is that? And I like Morsey, and he's got a bit. You know, he's five foot two, but whatever. He's he's got a bit. We, you know, Evans. I love Evans. He's a lovely, lovely player, isn't he? But we need something, and I See, really my... want—I want, I want something like that, and that could be anywhere in the team. That could, doesn't necessarily have to be in the centre. Um, I think we've got a little bit of a—we've still got a fluffy underbelly. It's definitely still there, and um, I think that's where we're missing a trick a little bit. And I don't know who gets sacrificed. I don't know. I don't care. But <laughs> whether whether we just have to harden up a little bit, or, or I don't know. I mean, at least Norwood had that. At least, at least, we just we want to be. We, we're not just going to work like Francine was saying. We're not going to cruise our way through games. This is League One. It's crap. So therefore, you need that plan. That's what worries me about Cook. Is that if we do need to go two up top, we need to go two up top. If it's not working, we do need a plan B, and he doesn't seem to have one. So January, the hairy ass centre back, whatever it was, we were saying on Twitter. Um, I liked I liked the fridge in Burgess. I haven't seen enough of them, but two big stonking lads. That's all you want in League One. You want that in front of you. You're like, oh hello, I'm not getting past these guys, am I? Um, so oh, I just think we there's something missing in this team, as my favorite quote was plucked from the Portsmouth podcast and plonked onto the ADT. Um there is there's still Something. I don't know how to get it. I don't know whether we can. I don't even know whether we need it. I might be talking absolute bollocks. But I I, I just think there's something... No, I, I agree with you that there's definitely a weakness to us and we need that bit of extra, you know, a bit of aggression, yeah? A bit of fight at times. Yeah. My big it's question... Fun, isn't it? Yeah. My big question for the weekend for Cook is... Do you start Fraser in central midfield? Mm. He was so good against... I know it was against Colchester. However, he looked so much better in that deep role than he has done in the attack um, in the attacking roles. And he's not going to get a play, He's not going to get Edwards out. And he's not going to replace Selena or Chaplin if Chaplin's that um, attacking mid the number ten role. 
So do we play him there? He then can sit deep, help Morsey, and he has that range of passing. But well, then you're dropping Evans, aren't you? But he, so, had an interview. he had an interview a few weeks ago, Francine, where he said, oh, look, I don't mind where to play, but I, I actually prefer it in the middle. You know, I'm not actually an actual winger. I don't play out there. I'm not I'm not actually yeah. a winger. So it's like, all right, okay, square peg, round hole, we're sticking him out there. And he's like, yeah. I'll play anywhere for the gaffer, but I'm actually central. You know, he's I, not I'm got the, this, the thing is that like, he doesn't. This is different for me, yeah. you say. This is different for me. As a player saying, you're playing me out of position. So yeah. that is interesting what he's going to do with him because he is a, he's a quality player, isn't he? He's not got the pace to be on the wing. That's why I think no, I, he doesn't think, work out there. I think he could be a real option off the bench in that role. As teams start to tire, he gets more space in the midfield. If he starts in that role, it might be high in the game. But if, if you're drawing or even if you lose, he can come on and start playing in four passes into feet. That could be a real asset. Well said. And uh, I want to just quickly bring up that we've had some exclusives on the pod today. We've had Scott Fraser, we've had Paul Cook, Ed Swartz. Who else we had on today, Alex? I think we've had oh, a few God. others. They're all they're all in my Arsenal Ross. I'll save them for future weeks. I can do <laughs> I can do Brad Archer a little bit and all if you want. Do he do talk a bit like that? He? <laughs> <laughs> but he lovely, he lovely with it. I love I love listening to him, but uh, uh, he's Suffolk, isn't it? Brad. Oh, uh, yeah. I'll pre- you're probably more Suffolk than me, Brad. I'm I'm really Suffolk, but I'm sure yeah, I'm really thinking. Suffolk. None of yeah, you is Suffolk. Yeah, born and yeah, born and raised in Houseware, proper Suffolk. That be right, boy. <laughs> <laughs> I think on that note, I think that's a perfect way to end it. But I always like to say, any other business, um, any other business, um, Brad? Anything else you want to add? Lovely. Well said. I think I said. I think I heard Blue Army in there. Um, if not. Then it was something else. But yeah, I think it was. Uh, Francine, any other business? No. Brilliant. And Alex, um, you've done a, a fantastic, oh, I can't wait for a half time team talk. I, I think you need to be in the dressing room if we're losing. I would, I would on like to ask I would like to ask one question of the of, of Brad and Francine and you, Ross. Go ahead. Um is that the best team? If you had a choice of the Wickham game, the where we picked Morsey, Evans, Burns, Edwards and Selena, is that the five that you would pick behind Bond? Yeah, or would, would you have Chaplin in there? Do you think Aluko deserves a run? Do you think Fraser? Or do you think that's his number one team? Morsey, Evans, I Burns think, with Edwards and Selena? I think that's his number one team. I do, however, think Edwards needs to show some end product in order to keep his place. I like him. I think I love the way he goes past players. However, if he's not going to be involved in the build-up of goals, not going to deliver balls into the box what is he doing other than being pretty? Um, so I would, I'd keep him there for now, but I, there would be question marks for me, potentially long-term. So who would you bring in if you weren't playing him? Chaplin. I don't, Chaplin, Chaplin is probably the one I'd go yeah. for. Yeah. I love Chaplin. Chaplin and Burns are my two favourite, um, favourite moments. So, yeah. Brad, are you the same? Um, I'll tell you what, I'd like, if my connection holds out, I'd like to see a Luco in a number 10 role because he's a very intelligent player. Um, if I was picking a team, I'd like to see Selena on the left, a Luco in the middle, and then Burns on the right. Um, I just I just think Sonny's class, I think his absolute class. And I've watched him play in a number 10 role for Fulham, and he's, he's brilliant there. So I, I just want to see him tried there. We've tried everyone else there. Let's just try him there as well. Because he's got the experience, he knows the position, um, great touch, great feet, gets out of his feet and score. Yeah, I'd like to see Sonny in the 10. One other thing, Ross, do you remember at the end of the season last year, we couldn't even vote for a player of the year, right? Yeah. Toto got it by default and we were even saying, let's not even have a competition for it. It's a waste of time. You look at potential players of the year now, Walton, the Renaissance, Burnsy. Fridge, our Egyptian yeah. king. If we, you Bacoli, know, I've been Bacoli, Bacoli Mon. What do you think? I mean, I've been, <laughs> I've been doing my um, game league. I've been doing my game league man of the match poll. I don't know if you see it, Alex, on the Rainbow Tractors um, Twitter. Um, so every game I choose four players. Sometimes it's really hard for sometimes for really bad reasons. Sometimes because because we played really well. Yeah. Um, 
And you might, in pre-season, did anyone think that Danassian would have four play of the match? Um, Selena no. hasn't had one. Yeah. Um, Bon hasn't had any because he's, you know, even though they're scoring the goals, they're being, they're the big names. It's incredible, isn't it? You know, there you've got more, more, more C, Fraser. Um, I think Tom Carroll's got one as well for his performance. God, remember him. Yes. Huh. Um, you, you know, some of those... It's it's everywhere. Everybody so far has put in a performance where you thought, yeah, they could, you know, they just Fair need to do it consistently. Cookie. Fair play to Cookie for that. But that's it, Ross. I'm I'm finished interrupting now. Apologies. No, no, no. <laughs> that was a nice little little segue into many other things about the team ahead this Saturday. Because yeah, he made an unchanged sort of eleven on Saturday for the <clears> Oldham <throat> game. Now he's back into league action. He's had two games to really yet, yeah. Brad. They are going to be tough. Oxford. Mm. Um, yeah. They're going to be really tough. They're okay. a well-oiled League One machine. So, play 4-3-3, three, three, um, very good out wide. I really like Mark Sipes. Got some really good players in there, really technically gifted. A bit, probably a bit like the MK Dons game in the fact that they'll probably control possession. Um, so, it's not going to be easy. But I just think that, yeah, we're going to win. I bring it on. Move in, move in, reach the playoff places. It'd be a massive win if we do. Absolutely massive. We've got the best Indeed. support in the league. We've got more I follow passes. We've got more away fans. We give every club in the league their record attendance at every bloody home game they have. We are so important to this success, to us moving up the table, the fans. We can't, get, we can't get on that back. We've got to stay positive, keep supporting. You know, over 20,000 for a home game with Oxford. That's ridiculous in League but One. You even, you even... We're just too large. We even throw 8,000 in the pizza trophy. Yeah, incredible. You, you, you know, most and we're clubs... we're all buying into it, aren't we? Yeah. We're all buying into it. We're all, we all want to just get it because it's so yeah. important to all of us. We are the best team in the world. We are the best fans in the world. No one can compare. So, you know, let's get it back in the championship for crying out loud. <laughs> yeah. We're bloody massive. We're bloody massive. And yeah. um, that has been... Another Kings of Anglia fan social, uh, Francine, Brad, Alex, thank you very much for joining me. Hope everybody at home on their drives, on their runs, on their walks have enjoyed mm -hmm. listening. Um, of course, we are sponsored by Manscaped. Um, use the code KOA at manscaped.com to get 20% off and free delivery. Um, and yeah, bring on this Saturday. It's going to be a big month ahead, some big games. Go and support the boys. Bring on this Saturday. Thanks again for listening. See you next time. Bye-bye for now. <laughs>